How y'all doing? Well, I haven't done this in a long time. Um, Charlie and Linda. Are, ah, let's see, I better time. Ain't, I ain't got enough time to explain it all to you. Or I should say, you ain't got enough time. <laughs> But anyway, um, come back this evening if you can. Um, I'm going to sing for you some more and, and talk a little bit more, a lot more. And um, try and figure out what in the world I need to say in the short time I have. Because what, what I've learned over the last 55 years of my life about the difference between religion and truth, um, it, can't be, it can't really be shared in detail in no hour or two. I know that. And, um, but I will simply say that fear is a, um, is a result of the fall of man. We all fear God, and uh, by naturally, we're born that way. And it's interesting to me that we, uh, we don't even realize that we're in fear of him. And I'm not a saved man, a lost man, it don't matter. Um, I personally believe that more, more saved people are more afraid of him than they even realize. And um, I'd like to, it would take me my whole life, I think, to um, maybe have a chance of getting some of the fear out of us. Because um, I can just, just quickly say that if you know God, you fear Him. But if I could ever get you to the point where you know the Father, you will not fear Him. Amen. It's a very, very small line of knowledge. And I'm not talking about getting saved talking about becoming a son and what it means because of our birth and how he views us and how we're supposed to view him jesus tried desperately to get us to see the father the way he sees the father but we never did get the message for some reason we're so ate up with fear we can't see our father all we see is god and um but i will tell you this much you cannot live in peace and fear you're going to live in peace or fear. You can't have a little bit of both. A little bit of fear is like being a little bit pregnant. Okay? <laughs> you cannot... There, I ain't kind of pregnant. You're pregnant. All right? <laughs> well, I ain't. I mean... <laughs> and, you know, again, fear is something we bo we're born into it. And... Uh, it's a, it's a natural result of the fall of man. If you remember, um, Adam, before he fell, he didn't fear God. He didn't know God. He walked with him. He walked it with him as a father and a son, and there was no fear in him. But when he fell, and uh, God came back, and he heard him, and he ran and hid himself because he was afraid. For the first time, he feared God. There was a separation. Fear is of the devil. It is not of the Father. The Bible says that fear, the Father says, the fear is not of me, it is of the evil one. And he says, the Father, 365 different times in Scripture, fear not. Amen. Sounds like to me, y'all, fear is a big issue. And um, we fear those things of which we do not understand. Unfortunately, we don't know our own Father. Uh you know, Charlie's talking about my dad, Merle Haggard. That, boy, that sounds strange coming out of my mouth, Merle Haggard. But see, I'm a son. I don't see Merle Haggard. I see my dad. Amen. And um, you'll never see my dad. You'll only see Merle Haggard. You're on the outside looking in. I'm on the inside looking out. And as a result, although my dad is Merle Haggard, he's just not to me. He's my dad. Amen. And although Merle Haggard is my dad... You'll never see my dad. You'll only see Merle Haggard. Our Father in Heaven has adopted us. We are his children now. Unfortunately, we still view him from an outsider's perspective. We still treat him like that. And he hates that because he knows that we're operating in fear. And fear is a cruel, cruel tool of the bully, Satan. And um, it takes a while. It can be done, though. You, he can get you to the point of fearlessness. 
I know for a fact it takes at least three and a half years simply because that's about how long it took Jesus to get those disciples to quit fearing. It's about how long it took the father to get Saul of Tarsus into the desert and out of the desert three and a half years. And he came out of there with a total different message. But, of course, he went in a slave and he came out a son. And uh, I could talk all day long. I know I can, Charlie. I can't help it, brother. I hate fear. Fear scares me. And, uh, and I can't stand it when I see people in fear. But it's, hard, it's the hardest thing in the world to do is get people out of fear when they don't think they fear at all. You know, and um, but out of the w- mouth comes the contents of the heart. And I'm not being critical, and I'm sure not trying to be a know-it-all. But I am simply saying, determine the words that we use re- reveal how little or how much we know. You never once heard Jesus look to the heavens and say, God. He always looked and said, Father. Until we look up without hesitation. And not from indoctrination or training, but from us, from our hearts, look up and see nothing but a father. It's then and only then we're truly viewing him from a son's perspective. Did you know that um, the Greek word translated God simply means creator? That's all it means. Um, the atheist that says, I do not believe in God, it makes no difference. He's still your creator. Okay? My father is the creator of everyone and everything. Like it or lump it. Okay? He is the creator. He is God. But he's everyone's God. Even the ones that says, I don't believe in him. It don't matter. He's still your God. He's still your creator. But is he your father? That's another issue. But, boy, I feel sorry for the ones that are caught somewhere in between. And that is the majority of the church, if not all of it. Until you learn how to start viewing him. And wouldn't you find it very strange if my dad walked in this room right now and I referred to him as Merle? Wouldn't that be dysfunctional sounding? So what an odd sound to come out of the mouth of a son. It would be very dysfunctional. Well, folks, we're very dysfunctional. And I'll shut up and sing now. Well, I'm kind of home sick for a country which I've never been before. No saying hey, goodbye. Will there be spoken? Won't matter anymore in beautiful land. I'm longing for you, and someday on the I'll stand. home shall be eternal be land my sweet beautiful land I'm looking now across that river Where my faith is gonna end inside. There's just a few more days to labor than 
will take that heavenly flight to Beulah Land. I am longing for you, and someday. Where my home shall be eternal, beautiful land, my sweet beautiful land. Well, I'm talking about her home. We'll see Jesus face to face And I'm talking about peace and love Well, in sweet Beulah Land Thank you.